This past weekend, 16 teams from around the U.S. descended on Brooklyn, New York to take part in Red Bull creation. You guys have been hand-selected and brought to this place to do something crazy. The teams were given 72 hours to build something that was awesome. So the theme is, is energy and motion, and it's basically a transportation-based theme. And we really gave these guys one constraint, um, that it had to move a person. Uh, and how it moved that person, it was completely open up to them. Oh, and one more restriction, no fossil fuels. In their work areas, each team was provided with reciprocating saws, angle grinders, and impact wrenches. You know, basically tools of uh, destruction. And, uh, and then we set up this central shop where we reached out to some manufacturers and said, you know, kind of bring over some of your biggest, status machines and, and let's see what these guys can do with them. The teams were also given accommodations. So we brought in 16 RVs and uh, one for each team, even for the local teams. So it, it's a 72-hour build-a-thon. You know, you gotta you gotta give them a, a place to rest. The event really got going at the carefully curated pile of junk. The junk pile was pretty pretty epic. I, I gotta say it was one of the best curated piles of junk that's that's ever existed. Um, we basically sent a friend of ours out with a box truck and a little bit of money to go find as much junk as, as humanly possible and, and the best junk and he drove around New York. You know, they had everything from bicycles to car parts to a, a whole nativity scene. And, I mean, just anything you can imagine. And we, uh, we had all the teams pick through it kind of one at a time. We visited the pile with a team called Innovation Thirst from Greenville, Texas. Is that the bus top from a We're a group of robotics enthusiasts, so we can, you know, use those talents and bring it to this competition. They had qualified for this event by building something called the Pour Master. It's an automated kegerator that could fill any vessel with a perfect amount of beer. They decided to grab a couple bikes first. A common tactic given the transportation-based theme. After we kind of went through the order, we just let it open to everybody to, to go and grab stuff, and it was gone in uh, minutes. <laughs> Back at their workspace, Innovation Thirst started brainstorming at first principles. We basically said, well, energy and motion. So we listed all the different types of energy, and we listed as many types of motion that we could get a person to do, and we kind of almost just kind of connected the dots between the two columns to say, well, what's you know, what type of things are cool ways to motivate and which are some cool different energy ways to, uh, to do it. And they also decided to saddle themselves with an additional challenge. So we decided to go big. We wanted to do a uh, multi-person riding vehicle and get all four of us on there. It's a big teamwork thing for us. They decided on a concept called the Portable Play Pod, a four-wheeled remote-controlled vehicle mounted with swings and a teeter-totter to recharge an electric battery. But the excitement of brainstorming quickly gave way to the harsh reality of moving so much mass. I mean, if we had gone with a single person riding device, I think we would have been a lot more relaxed. Um, we would have already had the, uh, the, all the, a lot of supplies we would have needed. We had to, you know, go to plan B and get some more motors, which forced us to change wheel size and then change it. And literally over the course of 12 hours, we were, we hit like three ups and three downs, and it was just a, roller coaster of emotion just on day one and we hadn't even built anything. They spent that first night further refining their design. Two of us were up till like four in the morning just and not not doing a lot of fabrication mostly doing some like CAD design work trying to figure out where we're going to source wheels and motors. The planning paid off. By day two they had all the materials they needed. Now it was time to start building. Innovation Thirst began preparing its raw steel. Meanwhile, around the work area, you could see the first hints of vehicles start to emerge. We caught up with the teams again by Saturday, more than 40 hours into the build. Innovation Thirst had a bunch of parts, but they hadn't yet begun connecting them together. So this is one wheel module from our holonomic drive system. Uh, the cool thing about this is that we power the wheel and steer the the wheel completely independently so and this applies to all four corners so 
So we have four of these built. Uh, we're still constructing the, the structure that is going to um, attach this section to the rest of the frame. But they did have most of their electronics done. Whereas some teams went purely mechanical with their creations, Innovation Thirst went all out with their control system. This is basically the, uh, the heart of the beast, if you will, of the uh, portable playground pod. Uh, we've got a lot of power to deal with, with these huge motors that we have. And so we've got uh, a multitude of systems to handle that power. The clock was still ticking. And with little more than 12 hours to go, other teams began to doubt whether Innovation Thirst would get anything together in time. By this point, around the workstation, most of the teams had wheels attached to a chassis of some sort. By Sunday morning, the time had come for the big public reveal. Several of the teams finished with really impressive demos. By working through the night, Innovation Thirst did manage to get all their wheels attached and all the electronics hooked up. They even managed to add a couple of swings and a patch of AstroTurf. But in the end, they were done in by the sheer size and complexity of their build. By the time it made it to the park, their battery was dying, and they still hadn't managed to resolve a problem with their steering. This robot can move in any direction. Each one of the wheels rotates 360 degrees, so instead of having to... So instead of having to parallel park into traffic, you can just kick the wheels to the left and immediately move into the spot. Although they were disappointed they didn't have something more to demo, Innovation Thirst had wanted to go big. When we came to this competition, we wanted to go as deep as we could. We wanted to go all out, either go huge success or huge failure. You know, we're not a team that wants to be in the middle, just kind of skating along. We want to be at the top or know that we failed miserably. <laughs> but while the finished creations were cool, they were nothing compared to the three-day experience the teams had shared. But it was really nice, like all the teams uh, were very nice to each other. We lended tools, we lended expertise, uh, we traded parts back and forth, and uh, we, couldn't, uh, we couldn't have finished without, without that. So definitely we uh, owe some credit to some other, other people who helped us out. And then, got a nice prize! <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's just beautiful organized. Creative day here. <laughs> For IEEE Spectrum, I'm Josh Romero.